Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. So in this video, we are going to discuss Geeks for Geeks problem of the day and today's problem is consecutive ones not allowed and it is a medium level problem. So the problem is very straightforward. It says that we have been given a positive integer n and we have to count all possible distinct binary strings of length n such that there are no consecutive ones in those strings and we have to output our answer modulo 10 is power 9 plus 7, right? So basically, if the value of n is 3, they have given us the example that the possible strings are 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1 and 0, 1, 0 and 1, 0, 0 and 1, 0, 1, right? So these are 5 distinct binary strings and what cannot be an answer? 1, 1, 0 cannot be an answer because there are 2 like consecutive ones, right? So this is what the problem wants to say. So how do we actually solve this problem? We are going to solve this problem with the help of DP. But uh, before diving into DP, let us first understand what are the states that I am going to maintain, right? So I am going to maintain a double dimensional DP of DP i2 and DP of ij is going to represent that I am currently at position i and my last character was 0, right? Similarly, DP of i1 is going to represent I am currently at position i and my last character was 1, right? So this is what dp of i0 and i1 are represented. Once I know this, then I can try to solve uh, these two cases separately. So let's say, let's consider the second case first. So let's say I am currently at dp of i1. How do we solve this? That means my last character was 1. If my last character was 1, my current character will have to be 0. I have no other choices, right? So, my dp of ij or more specifically my dp of i1 will be equal to dp of i plus 1 0. Why is it like this? Because you understood that my previous character was 1. That means my current character will have to be 0, right? So, when I go to i plus 1, it will mark that the previous character was 0, right? Because I already know that the previous character was 0 for i plus 1, right? So, let me just like write it more clearly. Let's say this is i minus 1 position, this is i th position and this is i plus 1th position, right? So, I am saying that if this character is 1, I know for sure that this character will have to be 0 and when I come to the i plus 1th position, then again, I will know that my previous character was 0. So, that is why I am using dp of i plus 1 and 0 because it indicates I am currently at position i plus 1 like this and my last character was 0, right? So, you see. That is why I have done it like this. Now let us talk about the other case. So let us say I am talking about i0. So if my last character was 0, my current character can be anything, right? It can be either uh, 0 or 1. So when I go to dp of i plus 1, it can be either like this or like this, right? So let me just explain you this part also. So what I am saying is my i minus 1th position was 0, right? That means my ith position can be 1, right? So i plus 1, when I come to i plus 1, so I will mark my answer as dp of i plus 1, 1, right? Because my last character at index i was 1. The other case can be that this also becomes 0. So at i plus 1, I can say that my last possible character was 0 as well, right? So that is why I am using both of them together. So I hope that you guys were able to understand this part. Now what we have to do is, uh, if you are using recursion, then you can simply simply add these two conditions to your recursion, right? So you will set dp of i1 as helper of i plus 1 0 and you will set dp of i0 as helper of i plus 1 0 plus helper of i plus 1 1, right? So you can just simply call your helper function like this. So instead of writing dp on the right hand side, you just have to write your helper function passing these st uh, states, right? But now what about the iterative solution, right? Writing the recursive solution is easy, but uh, let's just say, let's just write it, uh, let's just write it pseudo code. So let's say I have a, a helper function like this, which receives two states i and j. So if let's say dp of ij is not equals to, is not equals to minus one, I'm just going to return dp of ij and then uh, let's say dp of if uh, j is equal to equal to 1, then what I am going to return? Return dp of ij is equal to helper of 
uh, i plus 1 and 0 else I am going to return dp of ij is equals to helper of i plus 1 comma 0 plus helper of i so let me just write it below plus helper of a plus 1 1 right and then obviously you have to take mod so that is something that you will have to take care of so like this and then you have it complete you have two return statements for both of the cases and that is it i believe so this is how you can simply form your recursive dp solution what i am doing is if my dp of ij has already been computed and it is not equal to minus 1 i can just return dp of ij and then if j is equal to 1 i mark my answer of dp of ij as helper of i plus 1 0 otherwise i mark my answer as helper of i plus 1 0 plus helper of i plus 1 1 and then obviously taking the mod of both of the values but now what if we want to form the iterative solution so the only thing that you need to take care about in the iterative solution is that you need to take care how the values or the order in which the values are computed right the inner logic will be exactly the same but here if you observe that the answer for i is depending upon i plus 1 that means all the values for i plus 1 should be computed before computing i right so this is the only thing that you need to take care of and this is how you should think about running your for loops right and what will be the base condition in both recursive and dp solutions so let's say if if i is equal to equals to n i can just return return one from here right so why why am i returning one the reason simply being when i reach this particular state or when i have exhausted the string that means i have found one valid state so that means one should be the count that i that i have to return right so this is exactly what we'll do in both of the cases now let me show you my iterative code so what i've done is i've constructed a two dimensional uh, vector called dp size n plus one and two right so at position n i'm setting up my base case at for n i don't uh, really care what the last character was even if it was zero or one my answer is going to be one for the last position i've initialized my mod value as well now what i do i start a reverse for loop from position i n minus one right so you see carefully it is a reverse for loop why because i already told you i need to compute i plus one before computing i right that is uh, that is the only way my dependencies will be satisfied so dp of i1 will be equal to dp of i plus 1 0 as we have already discussed and dp of i0 will be equal to dp of i plus 1 1 and plus dp of i plus 1 0 and obviously taking the mod value so at the end i can just return my dp of 0 0 why because uh, i am starting from position 0 that is for sure but why this particular 0 for the first position i don't have any constraints i can either have a 0 at the first position or a 1 as the first position so to avoid the constraint i have to pass a 0 that means i can place any character in the current position if i pass 1 then i will only be able to place a 1 at the first position only right so that is why you have to pass 0 so that is it for this particular video let me submit this and show you that this particular code works and the solution is absolutely correct okay so it got time limit exceeded but uh, i just submitted it just a while before so you see i have submitted the exact same code i believe i have not made any changes to it uh, i'm not sure if something has changed or not but i don't think it should be okay so it got accepted i didn't change anything again so let me submit this again again it got accepted uh the very first thing our uh, uh, time complexity is within the limits so there is nothing to worry about that it is simply o of n as you can see i'm just using a simple for loop uh, going from n minus 1 to greater than minus 1 so this must have been some issue with their servers i'm not sure but again let me submit this again once again for you so that we can see that this is working okay so it passed again that must have been some issue with the uh, server only right so that is it for this particular video i hope that you guys were able to understand the solution 
if you guys did then consider dropping a like on this video and don't forget to share thoughts in the comments because your engagement with this video really really helps the youtube algorithm to understand that this video is actually helpful for you and it will be able to reach much more people like you who want to keep solving new problems so that is it for today till the next video drops keep coding stay safe bye bye